So I've always been uh, interested in Islamic finance uh, from my university days. Actually, it was one of the dissertations that I was considering doing. Then I kind of went on and became an accountant, chartered accountant, as many of us have <laughs> become, and um, I joined financial services, albeit it was in investment rather than in um, banking to begin with. But whilst I was doing that, my knowledge of financial services, of course, improved. But the critical point um, was a spiritual turning point for me as a person um, as well. So it was my first Hajj in 2002. I took my mother, my father, and my father's brother, the older brother. Um, and, you know, whilst I was on Hajj, it was a very, very difficult Hajj. You know, everything that could go wrong went wrong. You know, we, we lost our luggage. There were delays on the, in the journey. Um, my, my uncle was elderly. You know, the wheelchair broke. Everything that you could possibly imagine <laughs> went wrong. But for all of that, it was a very rewarding spiritual experience. But it was tough. Anyway, I came back. And within a few months, the company I was working for was taken over by a high street bank. And just one of those turning points in life, it was an opportunity to consider what I was doing and move on. So during that takeover period, I ended up in banking. At that time, we got wind of somebody opening up an Islamic bank from Bahrain. They needed uh, management. And alhamdulillah, I got a job. Now, it, I took a pay cut and I took a positional cut. So I thought, well, you know, I'm, I was an accountant in financial services. I was a bit of a hatchet man. You know, I'd go and restructure Restructuring is euphemism for how do I take heads out and how do I make things more efficient. And part of me wanted to be involved in building something, creating something, you know, with the, by the will of Allah, do something that actually was more positive. The first thing to say about a sacrifice, it shows the sincerity of your intentions because you've backed it up with a sacrifice, an action, um, where Actually, inertia is the default, right? You could just coast in a, in, in my case, I could have coasted at the conventional bank. I could have stayed there. They offered me a job. So the importance of a sacrifice to anybody, I would say, in any, uh, any um, dream or opportunity they're chasing, it shows your sincerity in trying to achieve that dream. So if you just, it's just a dream or a wish otherwise. Mm -hmm. So think about this. There's a, a bank launches. Um, uh, kind of uh, proposing a product uh, which people didn't understand, hadn't been done before, products, with a name that people hadn't heard before, quite shortly after a, a bank had recently gone bust, right? You know, or been closed down, BCCI. So new product, new name, and a culture and a, a point in history where new banks come into the high street, non-existent. So you can imagine from my perspective, that's a hard sell. And the only way you can do that is if you're sincere, right? It's how do you attract people to an organization like that? They've got to have a certain inner belief in what they're doing, yeah? You're fighting river. You are helping it, people to enact their faith, but they previously hadn't been able to do it. It's incredibly powerful to put purpose behind a job. If it's just a job, it's just another banking job versus the people. And then that just gives you this kind of common spirit, yeah? And it's a kind of... Um, you're in the trenches together because it's, it was a tough, tough market. And because we had that belief, this kind of core that existed in the bank, that really took the bank through some very troubling and difficult times. You know, the bank, like a lot of banks, went through a lot of trouble in the crisis, financial crisis. Yet we came out the other end. What held it together? This total, absolute belief that we were doing the right thing. That... This country and the ordinary people in this country deserved a form of Islamic banking. It's not just for the rich person. My first impressions of meeting scholars, clearly, is the, you're very respectful. These people have immense knowledge on the fiqh, the jurisprudence of Islamic uh, finance. I think at the same time, um, it's, it's, it's important that they maintain an interaction uh, which I think could be better. It's just, it just shouldn't be one or two people in a bank. Because if you want to inculcate values, there's values we say in banking should be top down, right? In, in, in any culture, top down. Top down 
has to incorporate visibility. And if you talk to most employees of Islamic banks, they kind of know of the scholars is on the website. They might have seen them once or twice in a career. And that, to my mind, isn't enough. And, uh, you know, it's been a common complaint in the industry that scholars take on too many banks. As a result, they don't, can they truly, truly influence a bank's culture? They can influence a bank's products, but can they influence a bank's culture? And I think scholars have to move um, beyond what I call the technical product advice. And they clearly have a lot of knowledge on that. And then once you've explained things to them, they can, they can amend it to make it, um, they, they can solve the problem. But to embed a culture which the values, the Sharia values of the, of the institution are being, uh, you, you know, embedded and people are living up to them, I think more visibility and more interaction would help. But, you know, the scholars, uh, they've got immense wisdom and talking to them is always um, very rewarding. The, the journey that you go through... Um, as an individual, as you try, to, as you seek to understand your dean and how it manifests itself in everyday transactions, that's quite a, that's a big, that's a kind of big jump because uh, religion at one point is confined to uh, ibadah, you know, what you do in the masjid and paying your salah and you know, doing what I call your fundamentals, fasting and trying to go on hajj and paying your zakat, and then you say actually, my religion has to be more all pervasive than that and starts impacting um, transactions. And how you, because, because as you go through your life cycle, your standard economic life cycle, I need to buy a home. I need, where should I put my money? You know, what, what, what's the institution doing with it? You start having to think about deeper issues, okay? So you go from that superficiality, it's just a mechanism to avoid interest, to actually but why would you even seek to go around the houses and develop a mechanism to avoid interest? And then once you understand the, the driver, the mechanics actually are just the mechanics. So the driver is to avoid um, you know, riba and, and, and unethical activity, right? And I think um, I used to go on these weekend courses, even while I was at the bank, um, which were more driven from a religious angle than a practitioner's angle, because I wanted to kind of understand um, more deeply why the Quran was prescribing, or proscribing, so not prescribing, or proscribing, prohibiting um, uh, riba. And of course, then you start looking into it and the, the social injustice that it embodies, right? So... The, the, that journey is then very hard to then uh, encapsulate into a consumer marketing message, right? For me, it's really important. I just can't, I've got to be honest, I can't get out of bed <laughs> unless there's that purpose and vision. It really is very hard for me to do that if it doesn't get me excited. Because I know if it's getting me excited, I can get others excited. And that's the, that's the big art. Um, you know, you can call it science, but for me, it's an art. If you can articulate something and get somebody else excited, all of these projects, are not down to me, it's, a, it's been a team effort. And you've got to get, get people behind you and bought into it. Remember I mentioned the core that existed within the bank? So my biggest, what I call ongoing achievement, as opposed to any single achievement, was to always keep those guys those you know, sister, brothers and sisters, if you like, and, and, and people of other faiths, really excited about the purpose and the goal. And that, if, you, if, you've got, if you've got that skill or you can develop that skill, you'll achieve far more than one person working by themselves. And that, that, that's fundamental, again, a lesson for any, anybody who wants to, to, to do well. You've got to take people with you and you've got to build belief so some people never go beyond becoming from an entrepreneur to, to turning big as it were and that's because they're solo artists if you like you've got to try and build people behind you the lowest moment um was uh was was, was probably a time in i think it was about 2008 in the middle of the crisis where 
you you kind of, you you kind of had to give up everything and just focus on survival, and so all that inspirational stuff uh, that I mentioned, you know, being able to develop products and bring people to the fold, and suddenly you're focusing on survival, keeping the bank uh, afloat, and then you're letting go good people. It's one thing to let go people who are not, you know, believe in not performing. One, but it's another thing to let go of people who are good um, because you then have to say I'm having to let go of good people to secure a greater good right? which is keeping a retail bank going there was a lot riding on that imagine the only Islamic retail bank the last Islamic retail bank at that time is others had bought, withdrawn going under the repercussions would have been far wider than this bank it would have been another generation before somebody would have attempted it again. And actually, internationally, people had always looked at the UK and said, you know, well, they've given a license to Islamic banks, but it hasn't worked. Why should we do it? But then you managed to get one to work and it opened up the doors, right? The regulators gave Islamic banking a license and an Islamic bank worked. That opened it up from far and wide. But the low point was there was a lot of sacrifice in keeping the idea alive to live and fight another day. What direction is the current industry heading? Yeah, so the the Islamic finance industry, um, I think, is coming up to a crossroads. We we will do lots of contracts that are sure compliant. But actually, Islam and Sharia, compl- Sharia is much more than about just designing contracts to fulfill um, certain rules. Uh, because we have the purposes of Sharia, right? Makasa the Sharia, right? And those purposes of Sharia are far deeper than just a contractual um, positioning. We are meant to look at, you know, social goals. We are meant to look after, as custodians on earth, look after the environment and worry about the climate. As, um, the, you know, the institutions of Zakat, what's the message behind that? It's our duty to look after the poor, right? You know, um, justice embodies good governance. You know, the, some of the great scholars of Islam were women, right? When you put all of that together, well, how, do, how does just simply doing a home finance contract and making it should be compliant, and whilst that has benefit, because it allows people to live by the, the basis of their faith, it doesn't allow us to do far more than just fulfill one financial goal. And so whether you call that social development, the social, you know, SDG goals, sustainable development goals, or environmental and social government governance islam allows us to do all of that ownership of islamic banks is very much around financial returns i think we have to prove to the owners of capital inverted commas that actually is good for the bottom line as well because the millennials really buy into the bigger picture I mean, the, the answer ultimately around um, this is leadership, okay? You know, it's not... So if, if the leaders can see beyond the financial goals and the owners can see beyond the financial goals and actually have think about long-termism, in the long term you make more money as well, then those leaders can uh, win that battle. That then brings me on to the corollary of this, are the right leaders there <laughs> who see that and can make it happen? And the short answer is there's not enough leaders with that vision and belief. And it comes back to that sincerity point that I talked about earlier. If you don't, not, if you don't buy your own products, you don't have a desire to make them constantly better, then you just say, okay, I'm going to do it in the most efficient, expeditious way and the most efficient, expeditious way is not to do it. It's just to say, let's just get a financial return. So are we winning or losing right now? Um, we're not winning. 
um, a groundswell of um, consumers have to drive that and say, we want this. Uh, having said that, I'm ever optimistic. There are people, people will come together and people will drive this because it's getting cheaper to become a financial services firm, not a bank, but a financial services firm. So it can happen. Yep. It's difficult to compare um, different countries specifically because we're in different regions. But I think the UK will be a leader uh, for a number of reasons. It'll be a leader in building this differential capability. A, because it's um, far ahead of other European countries. And it just takes time to get to this point. Yeah, because whether it's just legislation or capability that exists within the country or just, I don't know, um, understanding and attitudes within government or civil service, right, or regulators or tax authorities, mm. you just can't accelerate it, be, uh, you know, mm. beyond a certain pace. So if France wanted to get into it tomorrow, it just has to go through a decade of building that up. So the, the UK inherently is in a good place for other reasons too. Uh, there is a strong um, ethical investment management uh, industry here. Uh, as we know, whether it's in Scotland or London or whatever, uh, wherever, so that um, those substantive goals that we talked about, uh, in embodying ethical from the Sharia perspective, a lot of the skills are in place. They just need to be applied in an Islamic banking setting. Um, and the third uh, ingredient, the third factor, is the UK is a technology. Uh, leader again uh, you know from a kind of fintech business model perspective you know might not be quite california yet but again in a uk concept con uh, in a european context and certainly compared to probably southeast asia it's pretty innovative compared to to there so when you put those three together i think we've got the potential with this remarkable change in the banking landscape because of open banking the commoditization of transactional banking. There's a real opportunity to bring all, bring this all together, um, and the UK is well placed. Whether it happens or not, it needs that leadership um, for sure. You know, if there's one uh, philosophy you should carry with you, piece, you know, it's really to improve and make better anything that you touch. Now, that's that's a kind of very high level philosophy, but you touch many things. So when you touch upon an organization you run or a department you run or a team you manage, if you can make it better. Yeah, so you've got to define what better is, what's that goal, but better in an ethical, responsible sense. Yeah, if you can leave the environment better than you found it, which is a challenge in this day and age, or if you can leave a relationship better in your family life, you know, if you can, your local community better, if you can leave your workplace better, if you can achieve uh, a goal or some sort of legacy by making things better. If you just drive, if you just strive with that philosophy, it will embody a lot of other things, right? Some of the things we talked about, that actually you'll have a longer term view, that you'll think more about in human capital investment as opposed to just financial in return. So... It encapsulates a lot. And of course, at an Islamic perspective, over and above that, we've got a clear idea of what better is. But it's not just ethical, it's moral as well, right? And, you know, um, I guess under the umbrella of the oneness of Allah, the Tawheed, right? We do everything because we believe in that fundamental, you know, belief of the oneness of Allah. So everything permeates from that. You make things better. Why? But because actually you just wanted to be remembered or you wanted to make the environment better or you did it because actually Allah said you're a custodian. That's why you want to make the environment better. Making things better, whatever you touch, make it better, it can operate on a number of levels. It operates for people who are not of a Muslim faith, but it also operates in, a, in, a, in a, an uber way, an overarching way for people of the faith. <laughs>